a couple days later, I was asleep and I was having a dream and I was in a spaceship. Okay. So I was having a dream, which we know is astral travel. If this is the case. And I was in a ship with a being and I asked the being his name. Now keep in mind, I had no idea of names of anything. This is me just venturing into that world. At this point, I'm just talking to the angels. And I remember seeing these letters in my reality, like as if it was a TV screen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ascension Gateway. Thank you for being here. And today I am super excited. I am talking with Seth Dietlin again. Hey, Seth. Hey, how are you? I love the name of your show, Ascension Gateway. It is right on point. So I'm very happy to be here and thank you for having me. Yes. Well, thank you. And the inspiration for that was about our, within, the gateway mm -hmm. within us. And that's how we ascend is from within, not from without, but from within. And so as we go in, and that's um, why I have my little my little promo there with the, all the chakras, all the gateways to, uh, yeah. to our higher parts of us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. And, and we're really getting it now. It's mm -hmm. so fun being a human right now that's integrating that ascension, playing ascension with other people, and feeling this increase in frequency of love, we really are getting it. It's as much as it was cleverly hidden, we really are getting it. And it's so much fun. And for those in the audience who feel isolated and you feel like you're getting it, maybe even not around people who are, trust me, people out there are getting it and you are one with us. So it's really exciting right now. Right. It is. We were just talking before we started recording how it, we are in some exciting times for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did the panel on New Year's Day together. Thank you for yes. doing that. Steph. Thank you. And, yes. Uh, yeah. And talking about exciting times coming up. And although it may not, it may be uncomfortable, but we can't have change without <laughs> some chaos, right? Yeah. I say bring it because what's behind that is what we really want. And so let's do it. And we're going to be protected and guided through that period anyway. And so there's actually nothing to be afraid of or nothing even to not want because we're just going to be observing it. And that's the position that we're going to be in. So I say, bring it on. <laughs> yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. So yeah, Steph is an angel channeler, works closely with the angels, is an angel himself. So he's bringing wow. his his energy, his angelic energy here onto the planet. Thank you. Thank you, Seth, for being here. Thank you. Yeah. I'm looking forward to creating some value for those listening. A lot of value. Yeah. yeah sure. If you don't mind sharing how you um, got started with remembering your angelic heritage. I, I, I have to say it, right? Your angelic heritage and communicating with angels. <laughs> Well, I, I love that you say that because we're all one, we're all part of the same field of consciousness. And so I only allow myself to serve, understanding that that's part of my role of being of service. And the connection with them is a really cool story because I was the epitome of the opposite end of the spectrum. Well, not really the opposite end of the spectrum, but my life really was about acquisition and consumerism. I was a real estate agent in Southern California, and it was all about the house and the nice cars and all that. And abundance is great. Yes, it absolutely is. And there's nothing to vilify about that, but it's empty when it is for that alone. And I was certainly in that. I was successful in that sense. And yet at the same time, there was something missing. And through my life's history, there were many things that created an opportunity for me to be triggered for lone, feeling lonely or unwanted, unlovable, uh, and not valuable. 
in the world, even when you're hitting very high levels of success, that still is brewing beneath the surface. And so it was. And I found myself in a situation where a lot of things fell apart all at once. And so it actually took away my illusion of success for a moment and brought me back to what was brewing underneath the surface. And it was so much that I was having a panic attack. There was a breakup of a one-sided relationship. There was some business setbacks. So all that I had gained ground on seemed to appear as if it were in retrograde motion. So during a panic attack, I first asked God, the creator, to take me. I said, please, you always say that if we ask for something, that you'll give it to us. And this is what I really want. I want to go to sleep tonight and I want to go back to wherever we come from. Mm -hmm. And we've all had moments like that where I can't speak for everyone. Sorry. We, a lot of us have had moments like that where we're done, we're fried and we're ready to go back to wherever we came from. And so the minute that came out of my mouth, though, I knew that as much as I asked for it, that it wasn't going to happen, that it was definitely a no go right? As they say. And so I said, well, that's fine. So I, I removed my original offer and I gave God a counter offer as they would do <laughs> in real estate. I gave God a counter offer. I said, all right, you know what? If you're not going to take me, then I want my angels to, well, I allegedly have angels around me. I want to talk to them. I want to see one for real. I want to feel them. I want to have a real relationship with them where I can hear them speak to me and I can get their guidance. And the minute I said that something shifted, I went into a state of peace and I felt something say to me telepathically, things are not just going to be okay, they're going to be better than okay. And I felt the presence of a circle of beings around me much the same way that you would feel when you're in a room and you can feel the energy of other beings in the room with you. you. And if that wasn't enough, my dog and cat jumped up on the bed and they looked around and I could tell that they could see them too. And I went to sleep peacefully and it was from the peace of that interaction that I could go to sleep because otherwise we all know when we're having a panic attack that we could stay up all night. But I went to sleep peacefully and I woke up thinking, what happened? That's weird. And as I was contemplating that, I felt something sort of fly back by my ear and I heard hello. And I said, hello. And the way that it spoke was telepathically, which I hadn't realized how that worked except for the fact that we innately know how it works. And when something like our angels or someone like our angels or the divine creator is speaking to us and we're listening telepathically, we know the message to completion. And I heard a message that said, you may think that we came in response to the incident, but try to understand that the incident that was a catalyst was brought in so that you could call on us because we are going to start working with each other now. And that's how it started. And a couple of my favorite experiences that were a bit mind-blowing as I got familiar with calibrating angel communication is that one day, and they would make a practice of making me aware of things ahead of time so that I knew that they were legitimate. They said to me that one of my sisters was going to call me and that she was going to tell me that she was pregnant. She was going to have a little girl. And four hours later, my sister called me to tell me that she was pregnant. I asked, is it a girl? She said, I don't know. But a few months later, my niece was born. And if that wasn't enough, as you know, on this journey, it doesn't just turn on and then we believe it fully from then on. There are moments of doubt when we have human experiences. And even a few years later, I was having a moment wondering, are these angels that I'm really communicating with? Because right now I'm having a low moment. And so several years later, when I was having a low moment uh, and a moment of doubt, 
my phone rang. It was my sister. And she said, oh, Ma Madeline wants to speak to you. And she was like four or five. And she gets on the phone and she asks me if I remembered when the angels told me that she was coming. <laughs> and I never told anyone about that. <laughs> but she had somehow or another remembered that while she was still in that state of being connected to her highest self. Nobody knew about that story. And she remembered it as a soul. And that was mind blowing. But we get to have these wonderful experiences that advance us and calibrate us, not just into communication, but actual communion, where we are in unity with our soul family, with our angel family. And at some point along the way, they let me know that the reason that we had this relationship in this state was that the world was going to change. They called it the coming of heaven on earth. We now refer to this as the new earth. And of course, this is 20 plus years ago. They began to reveal to me that the earth was about to change dramatically and that it wouldn't look anything like what it does now. And that whatever it is that I was assigned to do in this body on this planet was part of a team of many, many people. And I want to cry tears of joy even right now, just thinking about the unity of all of us and people in the audience who are listening to this, who are part of that team of people that are here to bring in the new earth. And they let me know that I would empower other people to do their role while I'm doing my role as well. But they filled in a lot of details about what the new earth looks like and what would happen in order to get us there. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It is a big, huge group of us, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's, um, your angels. Okay. I mean, <laughs> there's so many questions in my head right now. Okay. So you're, I mean, I, we, when we start remembering who we are, we work with our angels, we work with our guides, mm -hmm. that, that type of thing. We work with our teachers and that type, um, our unseen helpers, I guess. Mm -hmm. it's, right. Yeah. So a lot of people have asked me this question and they have probably asked you that too, is, um, what do you consider the difference between our angels and spirit, what we call spirit guides? Yeah. So a lot of people say that the difference between angels and spirit guides is that one group has embodied and the other hasn't. And that may be quite possible because spirit guides have a unique knowledge of being in the density of the human experience. And the angels have or hold a massive quantum paradigm that doesn't necessarily incorporate the density. And in a certain way, when we have spirit guides, they can also incorporate the group of those that have lived here among us who have transitioned, such as family members or friends that we know that have crossed over to the other side before us. And once they cross over, they also play a role in guiding us or communicating with us. And they can do that with the understanding that they have having been in a human body. Well, when we return to the other side, there is a level of unity. And the best way that I relate to all of these realms is understanding that as much as we can't comprehend this as a human that is equipped with the linear mind, that there is, that we have a plural and singular nature all at once. And so there's a band of energy that is the angels. And in the meantime, we can have specific angels like Raphael or Metatron or even other unnamed angels like our guardian angels. And they may appear to us as singularities, but they are very much part of 
a unity of consciousness and much the same way when our grandmother or our mother crosses over and they join the unity, but they can still come to us as their individual. Right. I love that explanation. Uh, and w- that's what I've been seeing with what I understand to be true too with my work when <clears throat> with soul retrieval and spirit rescue type of thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. And mm-hmm. that, you know, uh, when spirit will stay on the earth plane and stay want to stay close. I mean, it's a choice, of course, but, and so people, the clients and people think that sometimes think that just because someone moves into the higher planes that they can't, aren't able to come close to us on the earth plane. And, and that's what I understand is we can, as long as we can move into the higher planes, we can, we can also drop our frequency. It's a lot harder to raise our frequency than it is to drop our frequency unless we have that knowledge and that of the higher planes. Does that make sense? Yeah, that you very much so. Sense? Yeah. It is interesting because we do feel raised when we're visited by any higher frequency being, whether it is a loved one that has crossed over and now is in their higher frequency state or the angels. And we know this because our relatives, for example, will visit us and we wake up feeling so deepened in our heart and such an amazing amount of love that we know that just their presence raised us up in that. Mm -hmm. I remember a time, and this was really a fantastic way of connecting to the other side as well. There was a time after my mom crossed over that my dad completely misunderstood where I was coming from on something. I've been misunderstood by my family my whole life. And whatever he thought I did, I absolutely did not do, but he's a very linear thinker. And so if he assessed that as much, that's exactly what it is, regardless if I actually did that or not. Anyway, there was this loss of communication as a result of it. And I remember a time where I was flying to Germany and the flight that I left from LA connected in Chicago, I was flying from Chicago. I flew over where my grandma used to live in Michigan, which is his mother. And I realized that I talked my grandmother when she was alive into taking a trip to Germany because my aunt was over there and she loved that trip. She didn't even drive a car, but she was willing to go on an airplane and she loved this. And I talked her into it. So I remembered that. And as I remembered that, all of a sudden I said, Grandma, can you talk to your son? Because I don't know what to do. Well, three days later, when I arrived in Germany, my dad called me and said, can we talk? And even though he didn't necessarily interact with her, maybe he did, I don't know. But literally after that long, I don't forget how many years it was, that we hadn't had a relationship or conversation, he called me out of the blue. And three nights later, my grandma came to visit me and my heart felt such bliss that I was shaking in my sleep. And I woke up crying tears of joy, not tears, but tears of joy from that union. And anytime we get to chat with angels or our loved ones who have crossed over, we definitely do feel raised into our authentic self, into that state of bliss, which is when we're in our fuller frequency state. I'm trying to use the words in a way that encompasses, because a lot of people use different words for this, and I want to meet people in their world, but our fullest of, of self is actually in a very high frequency state, and we have variations in the middle, we get right. to be raised up to that with these interactions as well. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Yes, you, uh, I will say that you do describe these states very well. Thank you a lot better than I can. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's hard to put into words. It really is. And, and especially when you're experiencing it. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult to put into words. Mm-hmm. It's, we're in a, a much slower vibration here, frequency. Right. Yeah. 
So what are your thoughts on the um, angelic beings and galactic beings like Anunnaki? Because Anunnaki, yes. when they came to the planet, they were called the shining ones and they were uh, full of light and all that. Um, the the real Anunnaki or the, the, well, Anunnaki was one to understand just means those that come from the sky. Okay? Yes. So, yeah. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you're going to love this as well, because I did a CE5 experience and there's a lot of mixed reviews about that kind of thing. And I think it has to do with the intention that individually we go into it, regardless of what's going on in that scene. But for whatever reason, I had seen CE5 and there was a local gathering in Los Angeles that I decided to do. And it was very interesting because we did the CE5 event and we saw lights and things like that. But I realized mm, I'm going to have my own experience. And I think it's a little different than what I had originally suspected that it would be like seeing a ship in the sky, although I can't wait to see one of those. And I know people who have. At any rate, a couple days later, I was asleep and I was having a dream. And I was in a spaceship. Okay, so I was having a dream, which we know is astral travel, if this is the case. And I was in a ship with a being. And I asked the being his name. Now, keep in mind, I had no idea of names of anything. This is me just venturing into that world. At this point, I'm just talking to the angels. And I remember seeing these letters in my reality, like as if it was a TV screen, and it said Anunnaki. So I thought his name was Anunnaki. Well, I called a bunch of people telling them that I met someone in an astral travel state whose name was Anunnaki. And so <laughs> someone said, well, Anunnaki is the name of uh, spacefaring people who are instrumental in, let's say, seeding humanity or being part of hum the humanity experience. And so... I decided to Google the word that I had seen and I found a picture of the way that the Anunnaki were depicted with their heads um, and everything like that, that looked just like my visitor. So I had no previous knowledge of this. And so I understand a positive variation of the Anunnaki, but mm -hmm. I was told by this person that Anunnaki person that they were watching over us and that there was nothing to be afraid of that was going on. Now, by the way, this event took place in 2019. So once 2020 rolled around, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, <laughs> I had this clue that the Anunnaki, among many with the angels as well, are watching over us or that they're guiding us or that they are protecting us and that they're making sure that we make this shift. Mm -hmm. So in, in addition to that, I have also since had some experiences and I'm pretty sure that we can't explain it all while we're still in a human body, but I've also had experiences where Metatron came to me in a ship and I've seen Archangel Michael in a ship as well. And so they don't just stay in their angelic forms with their wings. They actually make visits in other dimensional planes, let's say, where they're in boardrooms on ships and things like this. Yeah. They have the ability to do all of this. And it's a way that they actually serve their role. And to try to explain it, I don't know that it makes it easier or better, but we can know what we know. We can have these expansive conversations with each other. And maybe it's not the one that we have at the neighborhood barbecue, but we can have these with each other. We start comparing notes and we end up finding that we're having some of the same experiences and realizations. Yeah. And I figured you'd like that. The other thing that's interesting <laughs> is that in another form of astral travel, I ended up connecting with a group of beings that are watching over us and they are in the ocean near Hawaii. 
And when I connected with them, they, they have a whole civilization under there. And they said, humanity will never find us because we vibrated a higher frequency. So until those members of humanity that ascend into another frequency variation, they'll be able to see us when they go under the ocean. But until then, they can occupy the same space and not see us. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of clients right after that, when I took them into hypnosis, they went right to that civilization and they found them too. So there's a lot of different things that we have because we not only have guides and guardians in spaceships, in the celestial planes, but we also have them in our oceans and underneath our mountains, in Telos and all kinds of different places too. And we're going to start meeting our brothers and sisters in higher frequency soon because I've had them come and visit me in the dreams or in the astral realm. And they mentioned to me that for those of us who can relate, waking up and realizing, wait a minute, I visited someone I visit frequently. It's because we're already in a state of frequency where while we're asleep, we visit another reality that we're also part of. Mm -hmm. And in that reality, we're also doing something that contributes to the ascension. Yes. So much in there. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I didn't even I know, expect right? it to, oh. I didn't even expect it to come out. I, I no, like, I'm glad. I, I'm so where happy. Where did that come from? I'm yeah. so happy. <laughs> I actually put, I actually put some pieces together as I was saying that, because I realized how all those things are connected. I didn't yeah. realize, but of course, as you know, when we start these conversations, we're not just sharing what we know. We're also um, making some connections of the dots at the same time. And it's like, totally. wow, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you were going back to uh, your, your reality shift, I call it reality shift. Cause I do that a lot where I'm just with a different community with on a ship or I'm in a different body. Mm -hmm. uh, I just saw, I was just in middle earth a week or so ago mm -hmm. in middle earth. And, you know, I'm, and I'm wearing like a like the Hobbit kind of thing, you know. I'm yeah. shorter, middle earth, so I just do these reality shifts. Yeah. And so, uh, one morning, and I've shared this here before, but I'm going to share it again. <laughs> one morning, I'm coming, I'm waking up, and I hear a, a female voice and saying, "Sharon, Sharon, can you hear me?" And I see, and she appears in front of me, and um, my eyes are closed, but they might as well have been open. Right. And she has a bald head, female, gorgeous, gorgeous. And her, her aura reminds me of what your background, it was that mm. pastel color and it mm -hmm. was moving around her and she was gorgeous. She had a high collar garment mm -hmm. on. It was gold with um, orange, orange mm -hmm. gold with piping. And, um, and she shows me a TV with a blank screen mm -hmm. and at the time i was watching shows like um the last kingdom you know and things like that because i'm a history mm -hmm. buff and i've been a warrior and a soldier and lots and lots of mm -hmm. lifetimes so i think she was telling me turn your tv off at night okay because <laughs> that's yeah that's what i would do is watch those series so um and then i i, I saw okay so i felt felt she was a future me after after a mm -hmm. while i kind of figured mm -hmm. she's probably a future me past me anunnaki i got the feeling she was anunnaki a couple weeks later i'm traveling and i'm on this huge ship and and in the room it's uh golden warm colored with a huge window in the front mm -hmm. and there's a being standing there with a bald head Mm -hmm. off in the distance and i'm just watching watching this person i can't tell if male or female and she or he turns around and i say oh it's you <laughs> and i felt uh, with both of them i feel a lot of emotion okay especially with that one mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Not in this one woman I follow, her name is Lena Denon, and she's a contactee that goes on the ships yes. consciously. Okay, you know about her, yeah. Mm-hmm. She drew, she talked about Enki Ia, who the, of the Anunnaki, who is back, who was the apparently the um the good brother, right? Between mm-hmm. the two brothers. And he had returned in February, as in February or around the beginning of um twenty twenty two. Mm-hmm. That's when you had your experience. That's when I had my experience. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this mm-hmm. is crazy. She confirms a lot of stuff that she brings through mm-hmm. with my experiences. Luckily, my higher self and my guidance brings, you know, helps me with these experiences before, not after, because then I wouldn't, then I would doubt it. But 